OpenAI started as a non-profit organization with a single goal to build safe AGI and share the benefits with the world. But we know that in reality, the story unfolded quite differently than how it all started. OpenAI not only changed their corporate structure from a non-profit to a for-profit company, they also had 11 funding rounds that brought in around 60 institutional investors along the way. And now, OpenAI is the most valuable private company in the world, sitting at around $500 billion. And over the years, this left a lot of people skeptical towards OpenAI. And at the core of this, what really changed was the incentive. In other words, the halcyon days of building AGI as a scientific endeavor yeah, we're not so sure about that anymore. And OpenAI isn't the only AI companies with a similar predicament. Meanwhile, Chinese Frontier Labs are also undergoing some massive innovation in AI. What's really crazier is that China is releasing their models as open models, which means people can copy and use them for free. But why would they do that? Why spend billions of dollars just so that you can let the rest of the world use it for free? At the core of this, we also have to evaluate their incentive as well. Meaning, what gain do Chinese companies have in releasing their models for free? Let's start with OpenAI. When OpenAI was formed in December 2015, the two co-chairs that started the venture were Sam Altman and Elon Musk. The nine founding members of OpenAI pledged to invest up to $1 billion altogether, which means OpenAI, when they started, had access to funds up to a $1 billion to achieve their ambitious mission, which is to build safe AGI and to share the benefits with the world. So OpenAI started to research and innovate in their lab. And after years of research, we come to the year 2018 and OpenAI struck gold. They saw the power of what GPT can do, which was an adaptation of Google's transformer model that was released in 2017. So it took OpenAI two and a half years to come to their first groundbreaking model called GPT and spent around $130 million to get to this point. And this is roughly when their incentive likely changed from a scientific to a financial incentive. In other words, once OpenAI saw the true power of what GPT can become, their mission evolved into a race to commercialize and protect their models. The first evidence to this incentive change was when GPT-2 that was initially set to release in February 2019, but in the name of quote-unquote harmful misuse, OpenAI ended up shying away from a full release until they eventually did with enough public pressure. Another evidence to this shift in incentive from a scientific to a financial incentive was in March 2019. OpenAI announced that they will switch to a non-profit to what they called a cap profit organization. And this cap on profit was 100 times initial investment. In other words, investors of OpenAI can't make more than 100 times their investment. And you might be looking at this number and think, okay, was that all that necessary? I mean, who's going to make 100 times their investment? I'll get to that in a second. This gets quite gnarly. So what ended up happening with OpenAI's corporate structure was that OpenAI split into two entities. The nonprofit entity of OpenAI remained as OpenAI Incorporated, but was a sole controlling shareholder of the new for-profit entity called OpenAI Global LLC. With this corporate structure, the nonprofit side still controls and makes decisions, but the OpenAI Global LLC now has the freedom to attract investments from venture capitals, banks, and private investors, as well as get employees stakes in the company. The only restriction was that investors can't make more than 100 times their initial investment and the rest goes to the nonprofit company. So as you can see, we now have a bit of a conflict in incentive. While the nonprofit entity still controls and make decisions for OpenAI in its entirety, the for-profit entity, or as they call it the cap profit side, incentivizes investors to leverage OpenAI to grow their investment. And so sure, the ultimate goal here is still the same, which is to build safe AGI and share the benefits with the world. But the for-profit side of OpenAI also have the ability to leverage public attention and scientific endeavor to create an incredible amount of wealth. And you might be wondering, how exactly do investors make money in the for-profit side? Isn't OpenAI a money losing business? So after the transition from non-profit to cap profit was completed, the first investor that joined OpenAI's gravy train was Microsoft with $1 billion investment in July, 2019. And at this time, OpenAI was probably valued at around $5 billion in valuation. But since this initial investment that Microsoft made in 2019, we had a lot more investors join the OpenAI gravy train like Wells Fargo, Sequoia Fund, Anderson Horowitz, and the rest that you can see on the screen. As you can see, we had a huge influx of investors and at each round of funding, the valuation of OpenAI climbed more and more. And today, 
OpenAI is now worth $500 billion, making them the most valuable private company in the world. So that means since the time Microsoft first invested in OpenAI in 2019 at around $5 billion valuation to today, where OpenAI is valued at $500 billion, Microsoft is already at 100 times their initial $1 billion investment, which means if they sold all their initial stake today to new investors, they will be getting $100 billion in return in just six years. So even if OpenAI never turns profit, investors can play the game of hot potato at each round of the funding, even though OpenAI never turns profit. So underneath the scientific incentive for OpenAI to one day achieve AGI, the restructuring of their corporate structure from a nonprofit to cap profit allowed a simultaneous financial incentive for venture capitals and companies to effectively pass hot potato from one round to another as valuation gets larger and larger. At this trajectory, OpenAI might be reaching a trillion dollar company soon. And just for point of reference, the subprime mortgage crisis in 2008 erased $8 trillion from the US economy. And we haven't even talked about Anthropic and XAI and other AI companies yet. Don't worry, this gets even more gnarly. In September 2024, OpenAI pushed to entirely abandon the nonprofit structure and completely transition them into a for-profit company. This move to completely change to a for-profit company was concrete evidence that showed OpenAI's true color. And the public's mistrust towards OpenAI started to really ramp up here. OpenAI, a company that was once supposed to spearhead AI research, was becoming a private and proprietary company. And in May 2025, OpenAI ended up dropping their pursuit of turning OpenAI completely into a for-profit company because they're faced with huge resistance. Most notably, this letter called Not For Private Gain, which outlined the OpenAI's mission to remain as a charitable organization and further clarified what the term AGI means. So after failing to ratify the for-profit structure, OpenAI settled to restructure their company as a public benefit corporation, or PBC. Under the PBC structure, the company can prioritize company's goals without accountability to investors. So this was definitely a move towards the right direction, right? Sort of. Except that they removed the cap profit from earlier, which means OpenAI started out as a nonprofit and incrementally went towards cap profit, and now it removed the cap profit entirely and turned into a PBC. So this means the founding members of OpenAI, as well as early investors in OpenAI like Microsoft, probably already surpassed the 100 times return, but they can rest assured that there's no ceiling now. And it was at this point that I really started to appreciate the founding fathers of America and how intelligent they were in drafting the constitution. Just like America, AGI has a huge potential to make a lot of people's lives better and also make a lot of people rich. In the same way, the founding fathers of America were also before a nation that was about to prosper like we've never seen before. And they both started with an idea and desperately needed a structure that keeps the power in check while incentivizing growth and freedom. Sadly, all corporate structure around AGI has not really been ideal because AGI just creates too strong of an incentive for those who attain it. So after looking at OpenAI, you might hope that this kind of situation is contained only in OpenAI. But we don't have to travel far to be proven wrong. The next stop in the gravy train is Anthropic. And oh boy, we're in for a good spanking, my friend. The year is 2021 and seven employees left OpenAI to start Anthropic. And this group seven set a different target than what OpenAI started as. Their mission was to study the safety properties at the technological frontier. And just like OpenAI, in order to achieve this ambitious goal, they needed funding to do that. Anthropic found an early investor from none other than Sam Bankman-Fried. Yeah, remember this guy? The once 41st richest man in America had invested $500 million of FTX money into Anthropic on April 29, 2022. And history tells us that SBF was a pretty shady dude to say the least. But his shadiness left their initial investment in Anthropic in an awkward spot. FTX was in dire straits to pay off customers after filing for bankruptcy. And later in 2024, FTX had an estate sale of their investment in Anthropic, and eventually their stake in Anthropic got sold for $884 million. So yeah, even in this situation, FTX made 76% return on investment. And get this, if Sam Bankman fried didn't do what he did and FTX actually held their stake in Anthropic until today, their investment of $500 million in 2022 would now be worth around $15 billion. That's almost 30 times return in just three and a half years. 
So just like we saw in OpenAI, the game of hot potato for Anthropic's valuation is just as bad. In just four years since they started, the company grew to be worth $183 billion, and investors in Anthropic throughout all different stages of funding rounds are sitting on huge return on investments as long as the valuation continues to grow or sustain. XAI is not that different either. The company was formed in 2023, and their method of operation is characterized by their iteration speed, not just in AI innovation, but also in construction, where Elon, being Elon, pushed to construct a Colossus facility in just four months. But just like OpenAI and Anthropic, in order to execute that fast, they also needed huge cash infusion from investors. In May 2024, XAI and the social media platform X merged into a single entity and the corporate structure changed from a PBC to a for-profit company. And the valuation of OpenAI also shows a very similar pattern to OpenAI and Anthropic, where their most recent fundraising included $20 billion largely from NVIDIA, putting them at $200 billion in valuation. Mistral, a company in Paris, also shares the same characteristics where in June 2023, where they started with just $117 million, and now, only two years later, they are now worth nearly $14 billion in valuation. Okay, what about China? Surely things have got to be different in China. Well, as a matter of fact, China is certainly taking a more methodical approach to AI than the US, but they're not without fault either. In the past, China has largely been behind in technology in comparison to the US. But with their recent success with EV and now with AI, China is starting to prove that they actually want to be a leader in technology rather than just playing catch up. And you might be wondering at this point, okay, if that's true, how come China releases their AI models for free as open models? There's gotta be a catch. At the risk of sounding too Socratic, the answer is actually in the question itself. What I mean by that is that the fact that we're talking about Chinese models in the first place is because they're open. In other words, if Chinese models weren't openly available, mainstream media probably wouldn't care as much as they do now about what's happening in Chinese AI labs. So in a way, it's sort of in China's best interest to release their AI models open for now to create engagement and awareness. And we're certainly at an inflection point now where Chinese models are actually beating a lot of US proprietary models in benchmarks and user preference, which means the days of open models from China could be nearing its end because they served their purpose. But there's one exception to this, and that's DeepSeek. Unlike other companies in China, as well as other companies in the US, DeepSeek has one of the cleanest rap sheets that I've seen. While the US is racing towards AGI, and honestly at this point, you could say that US is racing against US rather than China because the game of this absurd valuation is only going to hurt American people. DeepSeek, on the other hand, isn't in an extremely unique position. The origin story of DeepSeek goes all the way back to the CEO Liang Wenfeng. Liang started a hedge fund called HighFlyer that primarily made investment decisions using machine learning techniques. The HighFlyer is now worth more than $10 billion and Liang has 99% voting rights with 55% ownership. And since HighFlyer was already working with machine learning, they had already stockpiled GPUs for their operations before the US famously started banning A100 GPU sales to China. The exact number of how much GPU firepower that HighFlyer has is not confirmed, but in 2021 alone, they purchased more than 10,000 NVIDIA A100 chips. And the CEO of Scale AI, Alexander Wang, estimates that DeepSeek likely has more advanced ships like H100 to the tune of 50,000. So not only does DeepSeek have instant access to GPUs to train their AI models, DeepSeek is predominantly funded by high flyers themselves. And this puts them in an extremely unique position to innovate for the sake of innovation. Other companies like Zipu, which is backed by Chinese state, and also tech giants like Tencent and Alibaba, and also Moonshot being backed by Alibaba and Tencent. But DeepSeek, on the other hand, said that they're not looking to have financing plans in the short term and that money has never been the problem. And DeepSeek have been focusing heavily on hiring the right people to make innovation in AI and help China become the true leader in AI innovation. And you might be wondering why I haven't brought up other frontier labs like Meta, Google, as well as Chinese frontier labs like Ant Group, ByteDance, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. These companies are different because all, except for one, are publicly traded companies. Whereas companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, DeepSeek, Moonshot, and Zipu are pure play AI companies. And these other companies, even though they're spending just as much in OpEx and CapEx, they're largely led by the R&D budget from an already established company. 
So in the likely or unlikely chance that AGI is either unattainable or maybe AGI is not what people actually hope to be, these labs in the long run are probably going to be okay, whereas pure play AI labs are probably in for a spanking. And it was at this point where I pieced everything together and realized how much of a mess all of this is. And I'm just scratching the surface of it all. But perhaps all of this is just an unfortunate admission fee that we have to pay as humanity tries to achieve AGI, given all of humanity's features and all of humanity's bugs.